episode because we're going to be talking about secrets to charging more as a freelancer so that you can ultimately put more in your pocket, take more home, be generous with money, and basically have a little more freedom in your day today. So I'm curious, where is everybody watching from? Feel free to drop it in the chat because I'd love to know exactly where you're watching from. And then we will dive on in. Um, if you are new to me, my name is Rachel Peterson. I'm a social media strategist. I've been in business for eight years. And over the last eight years, really over the last 10 years, I went from being a single mom on welfare to basically building two businesses that have done over $10 million combined, which is really, really exciting. Um, we've had the privilege of working with some amazing clients, such as Dean Graciosi, ClickFunnels, Code Red. We did white label work for Lions. Gate. Um, but one question I really have for you guys today is um, where is your pricing at today? Get that locked into your mind right now because we're going to dive on in and say hello. So I know who is here. Okay. Whew, this is going to be one of my favorite topics. Um, one of the things that I hear freelancers say a lot and drop a yes if this resonates for you is they will say there is no one who's willing to pay my price or everyone I talk to doesn't have the money to actually hire me for the rates that I want to charge. Hi, Rebecca. Good to see you. Um, I see this come up a lot. And one of the things that's really interesting about this thought process is this is kind of a small pond mentality. Have you ever felt this way? Drop a yes if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So there are no clients willing to pay my prices or no one's willing to pay what I want uh, to basically charge. Very, very common. So I'm going to share a few different things, then we'll dive into um some things that are going to shift your beliefs. Cool. You guys ready for this? We're going to have some fun with this. So this, I'm going to share a few stats that absolutely changed the game for me. Now I grew up in poverty. And so I grew up on a street where there were meth dens. The house across the street was burned down. My house has been shot at. I didn't really know that millionaires existed outside of like Hollywood and business. Um, and so for me, the idea, and drop a yes if that resonates for you as well, the idea that there were people who just made millions, it was really and truly just this like foreign concept. I did not believe it, um, or rather I would believe it if I saw it myself. It wasn't until I think I was like 18 or 19 that I came into contact with someone who had ever made a million dollars. Ready for this? In just the U.S. alone, there are 22 million millionaires. Holy moly drop your reaction in the chat because this expanded my mind significantly. In fact, 1.1% of the world's population are millionaires. <laughs> Crazy, right? 8.8% of the U.S. adult population are millionaires. So these three things right here just instantly shift some of our beliefs. Like, wait a second, if there's 22 million millionaires in just the U.S., drop a yes if you're like, that means that there are people who can probably afford high ticket services from me, at least one or two. <laughs> drop a yes, right? Okay. So the biggest mistake that you're making when you believe that there are no clients willing to pay your prices ready for this, I want you to write this one down. This is going to be a game changer. You are pricing and thinking with your own wallet. Ooh, let that one sink in. You are pricing and thinking with your own wallet. So what happens is we sometimes get this belief that because we haven't seen or known or experienced millions that other people don't either. And what happens is it leads us to kind of get into this uh, cycle of belief that everyone else is in the same financial situation as us, especially considering when the majority of our social media networks are straight up. I think I can do captions. Um, let's see if we can do it. Mm, I cannot add captions. Hold on. Nope, <laughs> I can't add captions. I was going to try real fast. What happens is we get into this echo chamber of belief that everybody else is in the same financial situation as us, which is kind of a wild place to be. Um, drop a yes if this is already resonating for you, okay? So you've got to stop offering your services in your own hometown. A lot of times people will say like, oh, I wanted to secure clients, so I talked to my local network or my friends and family. Drop a yes if you needed to hear this today. What you've got to do is you've got to start casting your net into bigger ponds, okay? 
I want to hear bigger ponds in the chat, bigger ponds, because the truth of the matter is if you are in an echo chamber of people being in the same financial situation as you, you're never going to be able to stair step that ladder and get out of that situation. Okay. So how do you cast your net into bigger ponds? Okay. Beautiful thing about this. This is going to seem really simple, but it's going to make more and more sense. Okay. So we'll go deeper and deeper into this. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the power of free networks that we have available. And I'll get into a little more of the nitty gritty in just a moment by sharing value to the platforms that people with bigger wallets are on. Okay. So four of the great examples of that are Facebook, especially specifically Facebook groups. They can be on TikTok. LinkedIn is a hot spot for this. And this does go on and on and on. But YouTube is also another great place to be leading with value. Write those words down. Leading with value. Because so often I see that people's main client acquisition strategy is to ask people if they want to hire them. Now, here's the thing. There is a powerful law that we can tap into. And you know how laws of the universe work, right? There are certain laws, like there's the law of gravity. If I jump off of my deck, I'm probably going to fall and break my legs. That is one of the laws of the universe. But what a lot of people don't know is there is a powerful law called the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity is a game changer. What happens is, and here's a really good example of it, when you go into a car dealership, car dealerships have studied um, what it is that makes people more likely to buy a car. And the law of reciprocity is as simple as offering someone cookies. Have you ever been offered cookies when you've looked at a car or a free soda or a coffee? There's actually, based on different gifts, a different statistical increase in your chances of buying. Now, the law of reciprocity is powerful, even if you know that it exists. And if you want to learn more about it, a great book to learn about the law of reciprocity is Influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini. It's a very difficult read, but it's a fun one because you learn about the law of reciprocity in, I think, chapter one or chapter two. But the law of reciprocity is so powerful. There was one day where we went to a restaurant and when they cleared away the dishes for dinner, um, they brought me a little plate for dessert, a little spoon for dessert, a little cup for coffee. And. And they brought me a dessert menu. And instantly I had this moment of like panic because I was like, wait a second, I don't even want dessert. I'm not in the mood for dessert. And I don't really care for any of these desserts. But they brought me all of the place settings for dessert. And just that act of them doing that for me made me feel like I had to buy dessert. The law of reciprocity is so powerful. Just by offering someone something for free, they feel more likely, technically kind of obligated to potentially work with you. And you can do this consistently on social media. Now, I personally do this. By the way, side note, whenever you feel like you're not getting enough inbound leads, it's a good sign that you are not serving enough. Serving is delivering value, supporting other people, etc. Write the word serve in the chat because this one's a game changer and it's part of the reason why we have a consistent um, in our marketing ecosystem flow of client leads. All right. So I personally do this with 10 things posts. It's a system that I created for delivering massive value consistently. And I try to do these two to three times a week. And these are posts that basically deliver 10 nuggets of value in each and every one on a specific topic. But I'm talking not just high level topic like or high level um, tactics like be consistent. No, I'm talking like nitty gritty, serious value so that you ready for this? Clients know that you actually know what you're talking about. 
Now, the question that I get a lot about serving with value and using that as an attraction piece for clients is, wait a second, if I give away all of my best info for free, won't clients just take it and implement it themselves? Anyone ever wonder about this? Like how much value is too much to give for free? Okay, ready for this? Your dream clients don't want to implement your best strategies themselves. Your dream clients, the ones that are high ticket, the dreamy ones with budgets, they don't have the time or energy or headspace to implement it. In fact, giving away your best info for free is a great way to get rid of tire kickers. Woo! You guys feeling that? It's so exciting. It's a way to completely flip the entire paradigm. But instead, it's going to show to people who are qualified to work with you that you actually know what you're talking about. It's going to make them say, yes, this is the person I want to talk with. Finally, someone who doesn't just say fluffy point, fluffy point, fluffy point. So you got to flip that giving paradigm on its head. Drop a yes if this is exciting for you because this is intense, right? Um, this is a huge thing. You ready for this? When you give value, do not attach a pitch to it. Do you guys hear me loud and clear on that? Drop a yes. I want to see all those yeses, okay? When you give value, do not attach a pitch to it. So often I see people sharing amazing value and then it goes right on into the pitch and it always kind of feels like a little bit of a, of a gotcha. Um, when you're sharing on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, your goal is to get people into your ecosystem, all right? And then when they raise their hand, because they will, when they raise their hand and say, yes, I am interested, then you can go ahead and share what comes next. Pretty cool, right? Okay, beautiful. Now I'm going to share one more thing that's going to be a game changer, all right? And that is that you should be filtering all of your clients through an application. Who needed this one today? Drop a yes if this is you. You want to filter all of the people who want to work with you through an application because the truth is if you're going to spend time on the phone with somebody and they don't have a budget, that's just demoralizing, consistently demoralizing. So you can have all the calls in the world, but if not a single one of them has a budget or is interested in uh, working with you potentially, you're wasting your time. You might as well go play at the park for free. Can I actually get like an amen in the chat? Because this is seriously such a time saver. Don't waste your time with tire kickers. Only hop on the call with people who fill out the application and indicate that they have a budget to work with you. Cool? Woof. Yes. Okay. Now, I'm super passionate about that one because the truth is, you guys, I just don't like wasting time. Anyone else feel that way? It's going to save you so much time. Think about how many times you've been on calls with people and straight up, they had absolutely no intention of hiring you. They were only a startup. They were just an idea. They were thinking about a candle company. I use a candle company because my cousin has one of those and it's successful, but you get the drift, right? I think about Jan from the office and her candle company. So with that time that you save from not hopping on the calls with tire kickers or people who don't actually have a budget to work with you, use that time to invest into creating that value content and pushing it out two to three times per week. Woo! I don't know where that little noise came from, but I'm liking it today. <laughs> all right. The second big thing that comes up consistently, and I hear this one all the time, is people say, everyone tries to lowball my pricing. Who here has had this happen before? Someone tried to lowball or negotiate pricing down. So you send over the proposal or you tell them what your pricing is, and suddenly they want it for half that rate or a fifth that rate. This is an exhausting process, right? So what happens here is you are already in defensive mode, okay? Have any of you ever played sports before or at least watched sports? So there's a big difference between defensive and offensive mode. I've never played tennis, but I really like video games. <laughs> Anyone else the same? Um, 
And there's a really fun game called Mario Tennis. I'm terrible at tennis. I'm actually not terrible, but not great. Um, and when you're playing tennis, what happens is you feel this weird energy of reactivity when you're behind. That means you are in that defensive mode. You're always trying to catch up. You can't quite get ahead. You can't decide and plan where the ball is going to go because you're already in defensive mode. The same thing is true. Do you guys want a couple of tips? I have a ton of tips for negotiations and how to handle when someone tries to low ball. But in the meantime, I can share like two of them, two really good ones with you guys today. Do you want those? When you're already in defensive mode, it's tough. And then we'll teach you how to get ahead of that curve and get back into offensive where ultimately you're either on a level playing field or you hold the upper hand. So when someone wants to negotiate your price down, there are two different roads that you can take. So if you don't want to work with low ticket clients at all, you only want to work with high ticket, you already have a few clients, a really great question, and I learned this from Chris Voss, is how am I supposed to do that? That's it. And then the key is you shut up. <laughs> that part's hard for me. And then you sit up, sit straight, have a straight face and wait. People get really uncomfortable with silence and you allow the silence to marinate. So when they say, I was thinking you could offer all of this for $500, this question instantly flips you from the defensive into the offensive mode because now you're asking a question and putting the burden of the problem of pricing or rather ready for this, not the problem of pricing, the problem of their lack of budget back on them. So it's a beautiful flip because when someone tries to negotiate or lowball, what they are doing is they are essentially disrespecting your expertise because they have a problem with their lack of funds. So ready for it? I was thinking you could do all that for $500. How am I supposed to do that? Anyone feel that energy? Just that waiting? that total flip in the dynamic, drop a yes. If you're like, dude, I'm totally going to try this. It is a game changer. Yes. You can send it over email. Yes. You can, um, say it straight face on a call, even on video. How am I supposed to do to that? Drop a yes. If you're going to try this, it's a cool one. Okay. The second one, and this is a big one. Um, if you don't currently have clients and I love that Desiree says this, whoever talks first loses, this is so true. Now, especially if you're a little more, um, introverted or you come from the Midwest or you come from a family where you were taught to be really nice. Um, these things can be really, really nerve wracking, but you don't have to get into the fast paced, like negotiation process. That's more for like the East coast peeps. They can do that if they want. Right. <laughs> Just making that joke. Cause Desiree's here. Um, but the truth is that sitting instantly transforms the entire dynamic. It's a beautiful thing. So the second thing that you can do for, do if you do need clients, even if they're lower ticket, is you can say, what price point were you looking for? If they said, I can't afford that, what price point were you looking for? And what you can do is let's say you had an entire proposal of 10 things or six things. Whoa, I went from four to six because I was saying six. So six things in your proposal now you're going to remove two of them to make it doable. So when someone has a lower price point in mind for their budget, you can actually remove deliverables if you really need the client in order to ultimately still provide them with some type of service and still secure the client. Drop a yes if you've already gotten at least a little bit of value today because I'm having fun. I think you guys are too. This is a really fun crew. <laughs> you guys are so cool. All right. Now, if you want to get ahead of this, if you want to get ahead of this, you have got to factor this in to every step of your process. Okay. What that means is you've got to think about three of the six steps 
in your entire business funnel as a freelancer. Okay. So there are six stages and we're only going to focus on three of them today. Four, five, six. So there are six stages in building a freelancing business and they're kind of like levers. Each of these will always come into play over and over and over again. And the top three, these are your top of funnel, are visibility, visibility, your lead gen, and your sales process, okay? When you plan out every part of your forward-facing business with higher ticket clients in mind, everything is going to look different. This is a part of high ticket client secrets, okay? So for example, when it comes to your visibility, and this one's a little tough love. Now, of course, you can be yourself on social media, but if you're showcasing a trashed room and your makeup is six days old and your hair hasn't been washed in two weeks and you're talking sloppy, all of that is going to showcase that you're not a high ticket fr freelancer. This is not me saying that you need to wear a blazer to be successful. However, just think about the difference between the salespeople at a Maserati dealership versus a Toyota dealership. What kind of differences do you guys notice between those people? Or another good example, uh, how about the difference between a Target employee and the way that they are dressed versus someone who's working at a Louis Vuitton? If you walk into Target, you'll see that the Target employees are wearing red shirts. It can be kind of like whatever shirt they want. Um, and their pants are tan, kind of khakis or jeans. At Louis Vuitton, they're dressed in head-to-toe black, nice jewelry. There are standards for manicuring. But your physicality is not everything. It's just a piece of this pie. You want to think about, like, your background. You want to think about um, the way that you're presenting information. You want to think about, like, am I vaping in my videos <laughs> or am I showcasing the best version of myself? Am I constantly talking about how broke I am, how much I'm struggling left and right? If that's what you're doing in between your value posts, a high-ticket client is going to say, I'm not sure. I don't know if this person can really deliver. It's okay to show up as you are sometimes. But if it's consistent, they're going to get really nervous about working with you. Drop a yes if this is helpful to know. Here's another example in your visibility. Well, so visibility, um, take a look at your presentation. I'll add actually one more point as well. You also may want to think about what types of visibility content, value content you're putting out there. So for example, if you're putting out content that is super beginner friendly, that could potentially not attract the dream clients that you want to work with. Your dream clients might be interested in things like growth or leads or results or advanced strategies or things like that. So I'm a huge fan of saying, what does my dream client need to see in order for them to be magnetized to me? And if I'm saying things like, here's how to set up an Instagram account, there's a very good chance that's not going to be my dream client. Unless, of course, your goal is to launch people on Instagram. Drop a yes if this is helpful for you. So think about your topics. And if they are the right bait. So for example, when you're fishing for um, panfish, like in Minnesota, we have sunnies. If you're fishing for panfish, you use a nightcrawler or a little worm. When you're fishing for a shark, you use very different bait. One of the most common things I see freelancers create when they're trying to get visible and create value is how I became a social media manager. That is not going to attract your dream clients. But if you say, here's how I am building my business on social media, that could potentially attract your dream clients. Pretty cool, right? All right. Now, in lead gen, 
And this is big. This is probably one of the biggest areas that I see potential for growth. Um, as you build your email list, you want to make sure that your lead magnets and the emails that follow really and truly deliver amazing value. Just uh, a few weeks ago, I opted into a big influencer's lead magnet, and the lead magnet was so light and fluffy um, when they were trying to actually attract clients. And it was talking about how to grow your YouTube channel. And it basically said, post videos. Um, mind blown. <laughs> Now, no hate to that person, but that would probably make more sense if they were marketing a course on how to start a brand new YouTube channel, um, yet they were trying to attract uh, agency clients, and I was blown away by that. So the truth of the matter is you want to make sure that the value in your emails that go out, in the lead magnets that you provide is top-notch value so that your dream clients say, this is someone who actually knows their stuff. So once again, we go back to that rule of how much do I gatekeep? And you do not have to gatekeep anything. You have permission to give away as much information as you want for free. I've seen people say like, hold your best stuff to yourself. You don't have to. It's up to you how much you want to give away. But I am going to say the more you give for free, the more people come to work with you. It is absolutely a game changer. Now, when it comes to sales, I'm going to share a couple things that are little tweaks that make a huge difference. If you're using a Gmail or Yahoo email, this instantly indicates to most clients that you're not serious or that you haven't been in business for very long. So you're going to want to get a branded email, possibly add a logo, add a signature to your email, um, and then using free tools such as like Typeform or Wufu even, Wufu is not even pretty and it still works great uh, as your application. And then you can use something like free Calendly or Acuity to book calls. All of these things are indications that you're a true professional. And then I recommend taking calls face-to-face -face over Zoom so that you can build know, like, and trust and ultimately build in the parasocial relationship with each and every one of your um, prospective clients. These mannerisms and behaviors make a huge difference. Um, drop a yes if this is already helpful for you. Now, what's really powerful is I put together all of my different strategies, tactics, and mindsets inside of High Ticket Client Secrets. And it goes in depth into everything that you need to know about attracting those high ticket clients. Okay, now question for you. Who here offers one price to clients or doesn't customize your packages for each and every client? This one piece of hair is going crazy. I accidentally got, you know, like horse hoof polish and sealer. I got it in my hair and then I got a ton of breakage. It was super awesome. <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, don't ask how I got that in my hair. It was very, very awkward and clumsy, but whatever. <laughs> so, um, okay. Let's dive on in to the pricing strategy that makes a big difference. And there are different levels to how advanced you get with this strategy. There's the general strategy and then there's like the advanced psychology behind it. And so we'll go light into it today because this makes a big difference. Okay. So ready for this. Let's say I work at a dealership and I offer a car for $100,000. What is the most that customer is most likely going to buy. <laughs> That's so funny. A hundred thousand dollar car. Okay. But 
if I offer a $50,000 car and a $250,000 car, what could they potentially buy? A $250,000 car. Okay, so there is something beautiful about changing up your pricing strategy, okay? Now, we don't always know for sure what a client's actual budget is going to be. Budgets are fairly fluid, which is a very fascinating concept. Um, I, I find that oftentimes budgets can quickly expand to fit the needs and desires of a business owner. Can I get an amen in the chat? Okay, so if a client, I think that they can afford, let's say, 20, if I know they can afford 2,500 per month. Okay. If I only offer them one tier and that's 2,500 per month, I am literally capping out what I have the ability to offer them. And we're not talking value ladder style here. Okay. But if I make 2,500, the first package 3,500, the second package, and 4,500, the third package, there are two psychological changes that happen, okay? The first is what's called a price anchor. A price anchor. This right here is what's called a price anchor. Now, I read a few different books that broke down the psychology of this, and it was really fascinating to learn that when you offer something that is significantly more expensive than what you actually want people to buy, it makes what they want, what you want them to buy seem more affordable. But the psychology behind numbers is such that when you offer three choices, statistically, people are going to choose the middle price. And time and time again, I've discovered this with our three-tier proposals, but there's also a second level to this. So we'll get to that in a second. Almost every single time, people take this one. And with dream clients, they are more likely to take the top package because dream clients with budgets love to spend money. They love to brag about it. They love to say, oh my gosh, I just spent this much money. I must really care about my business. Can I get a yes in the chat if this is helping you and supporting you? And you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought about it that way. Business owners love to brag about how much they spent and invested into their business time and time again. So give them the opportunity to have bigger packages. All right. Should we keep getting nerdy on this? You guys having fun? Drop a yes if you're if you're in. Should we keep getting a little more nerdy? Now, what's wild about this is this is what you know you can get. The reason the three-tier strategy works so well is because it stretches your belief of what's possible. The first time a client ever said yes to my $118,000 package, sorry, $117,000 package, I was in a hotel room with Molly Mahoney, just about fell off the bed because that was my third tier. I had no clue that someone would ever get the third tier at $117,000. The first time a client ever said yes to my $247,000 package, I freaked out because I made that one up as a price anchor. They weren't supposed to actually take it. And suddenly they took it. Pretty wild, right? So this is what you know you can get. This is a stretch of belief just like a comfortable stretch. You know the difference between like a big stretch and a comfy stretch, right? So I'm talking like light V-sit, just stretch a little, okay? And this one should almost be like a little bit of a quantum stretch where you're like, I cannot even imagine yet what it would be like to secure a client at $4,500 per month. So tier one is what you know you can get. Tier two is stretching your belief. Tier three 
is 45 or sorry, is the quantum stretch. And it really pulls you to a new realm in your business. Okay. Who here is having fun? Now, in case you're like, but my prices are so much lower than that. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys my stair step of belief with pricing. So let's say your pricing is currently, and don't put your pricing on your website ever. Don't put your pricing on your website ever, okay? Because that instantly indicates that you're not a high ticket provider. That instantly indicates that you're like Amazon. I see it. I want it. I got it, right? Straight up. You want people to have to get on a call with you. Cool? All right. So the stair steps of belief. Stair steps of belief in pricing are super powerful. So let's say you charge like $500 per month, and we'll go through a couple different pricing scenarios. If you were to switch tomorrow to $5,000 pricing, you would have an absolute shock to your system, okay? Absolute shock to your system. And you would straight up probably lose the client in the first month. Because what we don't realize is just like when you move a goldfish from one small bowl to a bigger tank, we also need time to acclimate. Some can quantum jump immediately. That's great. That's not everybody. <laughs> you need time to acclimate. So if you transfer, did you guys know this, by the way? I've had a lot of goldfish. I've also lost a lot of goldfish. So far, I'm better with horses and dogs than goldfish. Unfortunately, rest in peace to all of our goldfish. Um, when a goldfish is transferred from a small bowl into a tank, it pretty much almost always dies of shock instantly because of the water change, the temperature change, the new environment. So you're actually supposed to put your goldfish in a plastic bag with the water from its bowl, put that bag in the bigger tank and let it sit for a day or two before you switch it to a new, or sorry, before you open the bag and let them go in. Whoa, right? But we are the same way when it comes to making more money. If you're suddenly transported into a place where you are charging way more than you used to, oftentimes you'll have absolute complete shock and completely self-sabotage. Not a hundred percent of the time, but drop a yes if this was helpful to know or it explains things that have happened in the past. Okay. So I like to do what's called the stair steps of belief. And this is a game changer because if you're charging $500 per month right now, then your next client, you're going to charge 600. You don't raise your rates for your old clients unless you want to lose them. Let me say that again. Don't raise your rates for your old clients unless you want to lose them, okay? So the next client you charge 600, client after that you charge 700, client after that you charge 800 per month. And before you know it, just five clients later, you're charging $1,000 per month per client. Now, when you're at $1,000 per month, you can make a little bit bigger jumps because it doesn't seem as out of the realm of possibility. Okay. So $1,250 per month, $1,500 per month, $1,750 per month, $2,000 per month. And then you can start to make bigger jumps again. $2,500 per month. And suddenly it doesn't seem that not possible in order to make these jumps to move. It's a gradual process. If it happens overnight for you, congrats. Happy. Amazing. But just remember, you will never make more money than you believe you're worthy of making. Did you hear that? You will never make more money than you believe you're worthy of making. So you've got to stair step your belief a bit. And I love the ideas of like, make a quantum jump. Okay, but also like we're humans and we have lives and we're real and every one of us at some point has doubt. Um, I did move from a thousand. There we go. So if you're gonna start working with clients today, do not charge less than a thousand dollars per month unless that seems absolutely um, crazy. Okay, so do what feels right and then stair step your way to belief. Now. 
there are different strategies for pricing that take it to a new level, which are pretty cool and pretty exciting. Um, who here has already learned a little bit, but I want to share a few more things that'll be really helpful. Okay. More money does not equal more deliverables unless it's a different tier. So if you have three tiers, there are more deliverables and more tiers, but as you raise your rates, you don't give away more. You just do it better and more accurately more consistently. Drop a yes if you hear me loud and clear on that, okay? Because sometimes people think that just because something charges or you charge more for something that you used to offer for $500 a month, that you suddenly have to throw in all these extra deliverables. No, you just do it better. And I have a great story. You've probably heard it, but maybe not in relation to charging as a freelancer. So a man calls a plumber to his home to solve a problem with one of his pipes. Coffee. The plumber looks around and listens for about 10 minutes and then he grabs a pipe wrench and he hits the pipe three, four times in the same place. Okay. The problem is quickly solved. The plumber then hands the man his invoice and the man is shocked to see that the invoice is for $200. The man objects. How on earth can you charge $200 for simply banging on a pipe three or four times with a pipe wrench? I demand that you clarify this bill. The, the plumber takes the invoice from the man, ready for it, recalculates it, and hands it back. The invoice now reads, item one, hitting the pipe with a pipe wrench, $2. Item two, knowing to hit the pipe with the pipe wrench, $99. Item three, knowing where and how to hit it, $99. Drop it yes if you needed this reminder today. There's a reason that I charge $3,500 per hour for a strategy call. Because I can look at a business and see exactly where to hit a pipe. There's a reason that you can charge more without having to add more deliverables. So good, right? I'm, you've probably heard that story before, but it is an absolute game changer. Now here is the key, ready for this. You've got to provide work that gets results in order to continue charging high ticket pricing. Drop a yes if you hear me loud and clear on this. You've got to provide work that gets results in order to charge high ticket pricing consistently. So you've got to invest time and money into your skill set consistently. Cool. Woo. We went intense today. We've covered a lot. Now, question for you guys. Who here would like my help and support with all this? Mine and my teams. Drop a yes in the chat if that's you. I love that lifetime learner. So good. So good. All right. If you would like my help, my team's help, and my amazing coaches' help, we have four incredible coaches. I have a program that is designed for freelancers. So if you like my style of teaching, mentorship, it's pretty chill, but also intense at the same time. If you want to dive in and invest into your skill set, into negotiations, into sales, if you would like for me to create all of the content prompts that you need to deliver value, then you can apply to work with all of us at clickforlife.com. That's C-L-I. Q-U-E-F-O-R-L-I-F-E.com. Yay, I can spell. Um, that also gets you access to all of my paid programs, um, weekly coaching, as well as an entire year's worth of content prompts that are specifically designed to allow you to give high level uh, value every single day. Plus, 
high ticket client secrets is only available inside of the social click. So feel free to book your call and I'll open it up for a couple of questions. Go ahead and drop your questions in the chat. Okay, let's get those going. What questions do you have? I know it takes time to type them, but I should have said at the very beginning, have your questions ready. <laughs> Lisa, hello, good to see you. Lisa's amazing. What questions do you have? Are SMU lessons updated? We haven't updated those for a really long time. Really good question. How did how do you let go of a client? Um, oh, there are several different ways to do it. Um, Lisa, in the Click Portal, is a script for firing clients. So it's completely templatized for you. So that is there for you. Did you miss four, five, and six? I don't think there was a four, five, and six in this one. Okay, what do you offer for 1,502 k It depends on the services that you offer. So that would be different for every single freelancer, but I'm a personally a huge fan of showing like five to eight deliverables for any package, unless it's a really low ticket package. Do we have a payment option for click? Yes, we do. Oh, this, sorry, I keep forgetting to share this because this is new and exciting. We also have, we just partnered with a funding company. So if you need a little bit of extra support jumping on in and getting that jump start on 2023, uh, Go to clickforlife.com and then ask my team about funding and they can support you with getting that all set up too. But there is a payment option for Click too. Okay, such good questions, you guys. Can you share more about why not to put pricing on a website? So that basically, you can say pri pricing starts at, and that's a good way to filter out some tire kickers, but straight up, um, you can ask about companies' revenue on your application, and then that way you don't hop on calls with people who are not serious about their business or not at the place where they're able to invest. Um, but putting your price on your website is just kind of like more of an Amazon thing. It's a lower ticket uh, thing that I see. Yep. When we want to outsource work for social media management, what is your favorite way to outsource? Build. There's two ways to outsource. You can either build out all of your SOPs and then hire like VAs to implement it, or you can hire experts and have them impart their knowledge. I like both methodologies. I personally do more of the VA route. That's how we go about it. If we, if you are working full time for a company, how do you open up opportunity to possible new clients? For example, the way you teach LinkedIn clients. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, you either just have to do it, and work can't really stop you from securing clients on the side. You're allowed to have side gigs unless there's a non like a non compete in your contract. Uh, but one way you can do it is by blocking all your coworkers and then just diving on in. <laughs> Could someone from Team Rachel get in touch? Um, yeah, can you email? I'll put the email in the chat. Email hello at rachelpeterson.com. There you go. There you go, there you go, there you go. Okay. I just realized I need to change my dream client. That's so exciting. Do we price differently for ads management and strategy? Um, you're going to follow a similar stair step of belief, but the truth is, Strategy is different than done for you. So strategy could be like stair step one or like price pricing tier number one. And then done for you is tiers two and three, depending on ad spend. Okay. If I run a marketing agency that serves clients who are mom entrepreneurs, what types of topics should I do for visibility? Well, I'm not going to do your whole content plan for you, but I would sit down and create a list of all of the pain points that mom entrepreneurs have, and then basically um, create content that gives them value around those pain points. So sit down, 
write down a list of the reasons why they're in pain and then create that entire list. Okay. Thank you. What's included in the packages? Well, you have to create your own packages. That's the key to this. Um, what's included in my packages is gonna be different than what's in your packages. And each and every freelancer is gonna offer different services, but you put together your own deliverables. Uh, I actually like the post videos lead magnet example for YouTube. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And thank you. The glasses have been so fun. Um, what is the website you use to outsource the work, the VA um, for social media management? There's two different places I get VAs from. So if, if I need it done for sure, right. The first time I go to virtual Kathy's and if I need, if I'm willing to like tinker around until I find a really great fit, then I go to Upwork. Okay. Do I help with the beauty industry? We have, and it's been really fun. So we grew a skincare company from four to $6,000 months to $286,000. Um, and that company did like $5 million in a year. It was pretty cool. Yeah, you got it. You just booked your call. Amazing. 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 What other questions do you guys have? I have a couple more minutes and then I have to go blanket my horses because it is getting to be winter cold or at least one of them. <laughs> While you guys are typing questions, I'll just share a little bit about our horses. So um, we got two horses that were basically in rescue situations. Is anyone here a horse person? I talk way too much about horses now. It's become, it's like marketing and horses, books and horses, strategy, and then horses. Um, <laughs> Nels, I'm excited. I can't wait to see you inside of the click. It'll be really fun. You have great energy. So, um, our two horses both came from like neglect situations, one just different types of neglect. One is a Pertron and he was 400 pounds underweight. So that was pretty upsetting. Um, and so we've had him for maybe three weeks now and he's already put on 70 pounds and we're working to get him up to, you know, his original weight, he's supposed to be 2,200 pounds and he was only 1,800. So that's been kind of intense, like, Oh, um, but worth it because now he's in a forever home. He's safe. He's fed. He's loved. He's taken care of. Just got him a draft blanket the other day. Um, and then my horse, that's Paul's horse. My horse was from, uh, another, another type of neglect situation. So her hooves hadn't been trimmed in six months. She had horseshoes on for six months and bruised her hooves. Like, and then I'll answer a couple more questions. Um, she had a cough. She had a bot infestation, like, these are just my babies. And I just straight up, I can't believe people would like neglect an animal. I, I can't, it, it doesn't even cross my mind how someone could ever do that. So got to love them. Got to love them, love them, love them, get them healthy. Okay. What is your take on marketing in 2023? I actually did a whole video on marketing in 2023. Um, and it is, let me pull it up because I almost want to like do an updated version because I did my marketing 2023 predictions and I think there's 13 of them. Let's see, 13. Let me just see if I can find it real fast. Maybe it wasn't 13. Uh, let me see if I can find it because I went really into depth and it would take longer than I have today. I swear I uploaded it. Did I not upload it? I'm going to find it because it is a really powerful video. Um, was it a live stream? Do you ever have those moments where you're like, I swear I did that. And I now I'm looking and I'm like, did I not turn that into a video? Ugh. I probably should turn that into a video. I thought I did though. Tell you what, Kenneth, that'll be up on my YouTube within a week. Sound good? Marlene grew up on a ranch. That's amazing. Riding horses is intense, Daniela, for sure. Okay. How do you 
find your target audience on LinkedIn. Yes, title searches and then get connected with them and then just share value content. Make sure your bio is optimized. What will be the best way for a beginner to close one client, the platform and inbound outbound? I'm not quite sure. Could you ask that a different way? You guys, I'm like, where is this video? I swear I already did it. I'll have to check with my video editor. I'm like peeking real fast just to see if it's here somewhere. So weird. Well, I have to do it because Thank you. This hair has been so fun. It's very Gatsby and it's been a blast. Just watched the TikTok documentary and I was curious whether you believe TikTok is sustainable for small businesses. Yes, I did do the email. Um, I wonder if I just never got to it. I feel like that might've been the week that Bradley got here. It's so weird. I'm going to check the podcast too. We are due for marketing predictions, podcasts, and email. Okay, I know what I'm doing on Thursday. All right, you guys, for those of you who have been chilling here, hanging out until the end, feel free to book a call with my team. And I can't wait to see some of you guys inside of Social Click. It will be awesome. Um, it's about to be a really, really, really good start to the year. Oh, here's a question. What will be the best way for a beginner who wants to get their first client without using Upwork or Fiverr? Um, I actually share a lot of different ways to get clients. So a bunch of those are on my YouTube. If you look for how to find a client. Oh no, I know which email it is, um, but I'll do the video. So I go in depth. Um, my favorite strategies are inside of the social click. Cause they're all really long in-depth trainings with templates and everything like that. Thanks Lee. Um, and by the way, Every couple of years, um, the government's like, let's ban TikTok. So I'm not worried about it. And if TikTok disappeared, my businesses would be fine. But the truth is, like, they go through this every couple of years. And so we just ride the wave. It'll be fine. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you guys later. Go have such a great day. And we will talk soon. Bye for now.